is it? Why is it? Anytime you get a knock on the door from the delivery bloke, suddenly everyone in the house goes nuts just because it's food, you know? <laughs> Food's here! <laughs> food, mum! Food's here, mum! <laughs> Fucking all right! <laughs> you know you're ordering Indian takeaway. <laughs> mum, Indian's here! What, just because your food's coming, you wouldn't do that in a restaurant, would you? <laughs> no, you're all sitting around the table, the waiter's on his way over to your table, you know, with a big tray of food. You're all sat there going, Food's coming! <laughs> food! <laughs> all right, mate, it's only fish and chips. People are all precious about food these days. Have you noticed that, you know? All these cooking shows on the TV, all this food on every channel. We don't know how lucky we are. It all seems so wasteful, doesn't it? Especially when there's people starving in the world. I think it's a political solution, but the burden always falls to us, the public. You know, surely these so-called charities can come up with better ideas. Have you seen this one? Where you can be like a pen pal to some poor kid in Africa. You can sponsor little Kwame, where for just three pounds a month, you can sponsor his whole village and be his pen pal. How the fuck does that work? How can we be a pen pal to some poor kid in Africa? What do they expect us to talk about? Dear Kwame, <laughs> what a night. We went to the cinema and had a huge bucket of popcorn. <laughs> then we stopped off at Nando's, the menu I've enclosed for you to look at. <laughs> The portions were fucking outrageous. I can't move. <laughs> anyway, must go pizzas here. <laughs> we're, sta <laughs> we're staying in tonight to watch the Great British Bake Off. There's a programme about cakes in that. <laughs> Dear English sponsor persons, <laughs> your evening sounds very exciting. <laughs> Thank you for sending the Nando's menu for which we now all live in. <laughs> we also have a bake-off over here. We stand in the hot sun for hours and hours. <laughs> waiting for a fucking new end drop. <laughs> it's like the other one they keep showing on the news channels. There are only three snow leopards left in the world, so send us your money. What's the point in that? How does that affect some poor bloke on a council estate in the middle of Manchester? People only respond to something if it affects them. Like if they said on that advert, there are only three cod fillets left in the sea. <laughs> Fuck, what will I have with me chips? <laughs> there are only five bits of scampi and one portion of mushy peas. As good as fucking posted, love. Hello? Yes, I'd like to adopt and be a pen pal to a large saveloy, please. I refuse to let it be extinct until I eat the bastard. <laughs> I do my bit, but I don't think you could ever do enough. That's why I don't get it every Christmas. They come out with those charity calendars. You know, the worst one of all, have you seen this one? The Calendar Girls calendar. Why do we have to look at a bunch of saggy 60-year-old women from the Cheltenham WI in the buff? We're trying to raise money to stop people being sick, not while you're hanging on my fucking fridge door. <laughs> I mean, even the fridge magnets like, fucking hell. <laughs> They're always in that barn, aren't they? Doing a different pose for each month with a strategically placed cherry ice bun in front of their droopy baps. <laughs> you know, as the months go by, she gets older and older. It's like January, February, March, <laughs> April, May, June. <laughs> stand behind something so you can't see their bits, you know? They're at the photo shoot and the photographer's like that. Oh, I see you're standing behind that big bale of hay. No. <laughs> I just had a bit of trim for a while, that's all. <laughs> Hasn't seen a lot of action. <laughs> <laughs> I notice you never get the blokes who work for Network Rail doing a fucking calendar. You know why, don't you? All the dates will be fucked about. 
be a small notice on the front due to engineering works January will now be freaking April <laughs> I can't I, listen I can't talk I'm getting older I know you know I'm, I'm taking tablets for fucking all sorts these days I don't I don't get it is it me I bought some Nurofen the other day is it me because it said on the packet if you become unconscious seek medical attention <laughs> <laughs> the doctors can be just as confusing. I got examined by him recently. It made no sense whatsoever. He said, go behind the screen, get undressed and lie down. I said, what for? You're out here. <laughs> well, it's not for privacy, is it? Because in a minute he's going to be in there with me. So what was the fucking point in that? We could have both stayed out here. <laughs> I said to him, why do you go behind the screen? I'll get undressed out here and I'll join you when the fuck I want. No, no, I do my doctors and nurses work in hospitals, you know, they're always full of reassuring words, they've seen everything. You got to casualty, it's all right, I'm a doctor, everything's gonna be fine, all right, all right? Mind you, they gotta be like that. It'd be no good if you went up to casualty, whipped your bad leg out, and the doctor went, what the fuck is that? <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> That's fucking disgusting! <laughs> Take me blood pressure? No, I'm fucking taking mine. That's really freaked me out. <laughs> the opticians are just as confusing. You got the opticians for an eye test. As soon as you walk through the door, they give you a form to fill out. I can't fucking see. <laughs> then they take you in that back room for the eye test. Yeah, they take you into this back room, right? You switch all the lights out, that bloke, and he go, would you like to tell me what that letter is over there? I'm like, I don't know, would you like to switch the fucking lights on? <laughs> so I can fucking see it! <laughs> and why does he have to come in so close to examine your eyes? I mean, he's right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I started doing that. <sighs> Like, what are you doing? I said, well, you fucking started it. <laughs> Brought me in this room, switched all the lights out, started getting fresh. <laughs> the dentist, the dentist is the same. The dentist is the only place they make you sit in that waiting room and listen to all the painful sounds you're going to have to endure when it's your turn to go through and sit in his chair. You're sitting in that waiting room, all you can hear coming from the room next door is like, <laughs> 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 and then the dentist walks in as if he's been at the back fluffing up a couple of fucking marshmallows. <laughs> Would you like to come through? <laughs> anyway, we don't need doctors in our house. Nah. See a penny, pick it up all day long, you'll have good luck. I don't know what that means. It's just the same. My wife keeps coming out of these sayings. I think they're from the ancient book of old wives' bollocks, I think. <laughs> you start coming down with anything like a cold in our house, she turns into the village sorcerer. I'm serious. You'll sneeze once in our house. Ah, two! Oh, starve a cold, feed the flu. <laughs> what the fuck is she talking about? She should be wearing one of those pointy hats with the bell on the end, playing a flute and fucking hopping around the kitchen. <laughs> you mention any health problem in our house, she turns into fucking Dumbledore. I've got a bit of a sore throat, love. Oh, sit down thrice and row a boat, catch a stoat, and this will clear your throat. <laughs> the fuck's you talking about? That would stir a lot of confidence, wouldn't it, if you was in hospital just about to undergo open heart surgery and the surgeon was standing there with a clipboard going, don't worry, it's a relatively simple operation. All I have to do is fly a bat, hither and back, this will cure your cardiac. <laughs> <laughs> Getting old, man, I am. I'm, I can feel it. I'm starting to take an interest in fucking stairlift adverts. <laughs> I, have you seen the standard stairlift advert with that old bloke going down that lift? Fuck me, it's slow, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, this old fella, he hasn't got a lot of time left, you know. By the time he reaches the bottom, he's going to start thinking about fucking funeral arrangements. <laughs> an emergency with a stand of stair lift. Quick, there's a fire! OK!
Guess that's me fucked. <laughs> Mind you, you can't have them too fast. That'd be frightening. You ready, Grandad? Pull! <laughs> I don't want to get old. I don't want to start losing control of my bodily functions, you know? Start wearing incontinent pants and stuff. I say that because there's two old women that meet at the top of our road and you know they're wearing something because of the conversation they have. Because as soon as they meet up, they go like, ah, oh, hello, ah. Yeah, I think I've got room for one. <laughs> you know, my nan does a lot to raise awareness for men's health issues. Every November, she goes a fucking moustache. <laughs> I don't want to get old. I don't want to get old. Suddenly, you're not allowed to do the things you used to do. Remember doing that as a kid? Skipping. You skipped everywhere as a kid. <laughs> Skipping's good. Why can't we do that now? Skipping's good. You get places quicker. <laughs> You know, turn up for work on Monday morning. Fucking hell, you're early. That's because I skipped. <laughs> I'm getting old. I can feel it. I wake up in the middle of the night in agony because I pulled a fucking hamstring. <laughs> well, how the fuck did that happen? I was asleep. I wasn't doing anything. I'm waking up in the morning with all sorts of injuries. Whiplash, snoring injuries, dead arms, cramp. I get cramp in the mornings. Footballers that have run around the field for 90 minutes get cramp. I've been doing fuck all for six. <laughs> Rigor mortis is setting, you know? And you can't run round the way and eat with that one. What happened? I don't know, I was asleep. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Put you in bed? No, don't do that, that's how it fucking started. <laughs> you should see me in the mornings these days. You should see me get out of bed. I look like a fucking golem on a bender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I used to wake up in the morning, huge hard on. Do you know what I wake up with now? Fucking soft off. <laughs> I used to wake up with a full Tom Jones, now I've got a fucking limp Cliff Richard. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, when you're young, when you're young, your balls are tight. <laughs> when you get to my age, it's like, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In there, it's like a fucking lava lamp. <laughs> oh, when you're young, your balls are tight. You make love like that. Dinky, 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 dinky. When you get to my age, it's like ping, ping, ow. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a cold day, I'll get out of bed. I'll get out of bed. If it's a cold day, I'll go. <laughs> <sighs> Somebody say, Oh, is that mink? Yeah, it does a bit. I'm washed for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm getting old. People keep telling me to slow down. Lee, slow down. People keep asking me to play golf. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't know anything about any sport. I'm an idiot. I can't play golf. I can't play any fucking sport. I don't know anything about golf. I'm like, oh, do you play golf? Wow. What position do you play? <laughs> table tennis. I quite like table tennis, but I always feel sorry for that poor plastic, tiny white ball they play with in the table tennis. You know, because it's always optimistic going across the table during a game. It's like... <laughs> but those Chinese players, they hit the shit out of them balls. 
It's only when they stop it and you can see all the damage, all that smashing around is done. Because all table tennis balls always land on the floor the same way. Like, 